Good morning. It is September 9th, 2012. I call this sermon at our message Winning Over the Enemy. This is Apostle Rose Brown greeting you again in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ and the Father who sent him. I come to you by way of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, <laughs> thanking God for the power to be saved and to be blessed and to share that salvation with you. Read with me now. Psalm 55, let's get blessed. Give ear to my prayer, O God, verse one, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise <clears throat> because of the voice of the enemy because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is sore pain within me, and the terror of death, <clears throat> the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Psalm 55 is a very awesome chapter. Um, book, chapter in the book of Psalms, and um, many times as uh, we know and we have studied, uh, the psalmist David has prophesied the crucifixion and the trial of his Lord, his Savior, Jesus Christ, and he certainly was not aware of it, but David's life mirrored the power of God, the love of God, the favor of God, the blessing of God, the choice of God, and the mercy and forgiveness of God, the grace of God. And David would many times in his escape from his own flesh as well as his trials dealing with everyone from King Saul to the different enemies of the children of Israel, David would prophesy Jesus' actual life, Jesus' actual trials, and Jesus' actual crucifixion over and over again. It's beautiful, it's powerful, and in reading Psalm 55, I want to share with you your authority and power over the enemy. Many times we find ourselves in this experience totally consumed by the trials and the events, uh, the mishaps and the struggles that we encounter in circumstances, but in individuals, individuals who have been a part of our life, who are presently involved in our lives, and who are remotely connected to us by way of some event or something that they have done or experiencing or the gamut of 
trials and, and, and mishaps and misunderstandings and um, attacks, if you will, can be summed up into one occurrence and one reality. You have an enemy who is already defeated, who the Father uses to bring out your redemptive power and to crystallize and manifest your authority over everything that has ever been created or formed as a weapon against you. The Father uses the enemy to prove who you are, not who you're going to be, not what you're going to earn. Oh, glory to God. Not what you're going to accomplish. Not what you might experience, but to prove who you are. Mm. I feel so good, I have to slap myself. See, you have to understand, my loved ones, that when the prophet Isaiah said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you will condemn it. You have to understand that Isaiah spoke that out of a knowledge and a power and an authority that was given to him by unction of the Holy Ghost. And it was declaring your state it was a prophetic word straight from the throne of heaven straight from the mouth of God and it was declaring your state as a human being created in the image of God oh it was exclusively directed to the children of Israel at that time and everything that God has initiated in the earth is to the children first but before there was a law before there was a separation before there was any cultural thing that gave the children of israel preeminence there was a god that created man he's the god of all nations all tribes all tongues all kindreds and he said i created man with the power to destroy everything that seeks to destroy him. When the psalmist talks about um, and actually this psalm was not written by David. Okay, It was written by one of the other prophets. But listen to me. When the psalmist talks about because of the the words of the enemy the voice of the enemy he is talking about how Satan has counterfeited everything that God has done everything that God has spoken Satan has counterfeited it with another word and those words today are very effective to the degree that you do not take flight into the word that was spoken over you before those words ever came about. See, the trials, the pain, the suffering, uh, even the negative words spoken against you by other people. This is witchcraft. This is manipulation and this is control by Satan. It's the enemy. And it's witchcraft because it comes after the word. Anything that comes after the word is witchcraft. I was uh, brought up in the church and bless, bless bless our souls so much of our experience in the so-called black church uh, is riddled with witchcraft 
it's riddled with something that comes behind the word of God. This is the spirit of witchcraft. Something that comes behind the word of God for the purpose of manipulation and control. And it'll always speak a word. And, you know, this word can be laced in things about God. Okay, it can have the frills of the truth and the gospel and the word of God uh, uh, spoken loosely around it. But at its core, it is a very demonic energy that promotes manipulation and control and subduing. And it will speak against the word of God while speaking things related to the Word of God. It will always bring up your weakness. And it is an energy that works and can go of itself once it is planted in any individual or any atmosphere or any environment. And the only thing that breaks it is the Holy Ghost and the unction word of God. You see, anything in this book that was spoken by God is the final authority in your life. Watch this. The final authority in your life is not what God spoke about your sin. Be clear about this because some of you, you get tripped up because when you see the word of God, what sticks out to you is the word that judges you. But before there was a word of judgment, there was a word of blessing. And that's what the preaching of the gospel brings you back to. The preaching of the gospel is never going to to remind you of what God delivered you from. That's teaching, that's rebuke, that's encouragement to turn to Christ. But at best, it's legalism. It's the law, which was a schoolmaster, which is just and good. But we are no longer under the law. So the core message of the gospel is not the law. But the word of blessing that was spoken over you is first. And anything that comes behind that is witchcraft. It's manipulation. And you have the power to win. Have. Have. Have the power to win over that. But see, you have to stay in the word and you have to have all of the components of the word working in your life. And... It's not something that you have to go out and shop for. The word of God is always around you. The word of God is always in your atmosphere. It, something I've known uh, about myself, about my life. Um, I know who I am. I know who I'm called to be. I know what I'm chosen to be. And I know what I do well like no one else does everyone has something that they do well but no one does what you do well like you I know that about me my central purpose in life is to be a voice for God that's my call. I have many talents. I have many abilities. 
I have many streams of expression, but what I do better than anything that I do is speak on behalf of my maker. That's our position. But see, if you don't know that about yourself, then things can be spoken to you, spoken over you that are reminiscent of what the psalmist is saying in this chapter that we just read and can be very effective in your life for generations. You can be in atmospheres and you can agree with atmospheres that promote that in your life. And as long as you agree with those atmospheres, you will never be anything in your experience beyond what those words say. That's witchcraft. It's manipulation. It's control. And it comes from the church and saints more than it comes from the world. The world is already set against you. You are born against the world. And the world has no place in you. And you are admonished not to love the world. And you take yourself out of harm's way. But witchcraft works in the church. Witchcraft works among saints. Witchcraft um, is derived from the Greek word for witchcraft is pharmakia. It's where we get the concept and the word pharmacy from. Witchcraft is a work of the flesh. It's listed in the book of Galatians as one of the works of the flesh. And uh, the original word pharmakia um, betrays what witchcraft does uh, in the pharmaceutical industry. Pharmaceutical merchandising comes behind the word of God that you are healed. And it seeks to manipulate and control your concept of healing. Now, and I'm dead. That look, nobody go on this. Uh, don't start saying uh, Rose is preaching. Uh, stop taking medicine and you're sinning when you're taking medicine and all. don't say that listen at what I'm saying because see that's witchcraft working in your mind speaking against what is being said now um, words spoken over you you should speak against if you're in an atmosphere where they're spoken, you should speak against. And if you can't speak against those words, and if you don't have permission to speak against those words by the atmosphere that you're in, you get out of that atmosphere, and I mean it. I really mean it. Because what you say and what you let be said to you and you take in, it's of greater consequence than you understand. God has given you the authority to speak his will into your life. Some of you, you invite me to things and you have people that you listen to and you invite me to listen to them. And I'm not going to specifically call you out because that's not why I'm here. But I need to let you know something. I am an apostle. I speak what God tells me to speak. You reject what you hear from me. It's of no consequence to you. I don't have that kind of power over you. But I do not give you power or authority to speak things to me that you have heard from someone else. And you can't receive me. And I don't give you that authority in my life to reject what God has said about me and speak what you believe about me. You have to do that to say, oh, he'll run you ragged. I love you. I'm out of time till next time.